Backwards Moon, Chapter 7. She wrecked the box without even asking, said Nettle, and I hate the way she sneaks around like that, listening and spying. Bracken nodded. The others never change form like that. She has way more magic than they do. What did she mean, our way is a witch's way? Bracken raised her shoulders. She said we'd find out, and she made fun of Scabiosa for saying the veil spinning will work. Do you think the others will even let us come to the veil spinning? Probably not, said Bracken. They can't keep treating us like little bitty witchlings our whole life. They can't, said Nettle. But it turned out they could. A veil spinning was no place for witchlings, Rose said, which meant they had to stay home. It was almost midnight, and out their sleeping loft window, Nettle and Bracken could see dim gray shapes standing in a circle around where the gathering fire would be if anyone had lit it. Nettle counted off each pointed hat. Six, she said. Seven, eight, nine. That means Toad Flax is there. Do you think she's even helping? You would think so, said Bracken, if only to keep the humans out for her own selfish wish. They watched as each witch took a lantern from her pocket and lit it with a spark from her finger. The lights rose into the sky and hovered. Nettle could hear shrill voices as the group formed a wavering V. Like wild geese on the wind, they streamed toward the pass. Now, asked Nettle, getting out her broomstick. Bracken nodded. They climbed to the window ledge, leaped onto their brooms, and sped after the lanterns. Keep back, said Bracken. Don't get too close. As they neared the pass, the witches scattered, their lanterns glimmering. Rose gave a sharp cry, and at that, the lanterns soared sideways across the pass. Behind each lantern, a thread of light spooled forth, glowing. Like spiders spinning, the witches glided back and forth and up and down. The strands wove together into a quivering web of light. The veil, breathed Bracken. The witches were chanting now. Rose flew above the web, scattering drops from the bottle of wellspring water. A wind blew down the valley, stirring the threads. Then the chanting died away. The threads began to dull and fray. Something's wrong, muttered Bracken. Something doesn't seem right. It doesn't feel right. Scraps of veil drifted by, gray as cobwebs. Netta looked to the pass. The sadness she'd noticed before, the hint of a true not remembered, still seemed to hang there. A wailing, a high-pitched crying under the stars began. At first, Nettle thought it was the wind. They're crying, said Bracken in a shocked voice. Nettle and Bracken hovered, horrified, as the others streamed past them, unseen. All but one. I thought you'd be here, said Toad Flax. She hovered near, holding her lantern high. It failed, cried Bracken. The magic failed. I knew it would, said Toad Flax. She drew closer. The wellspring water was no good, she hissed, as any fool could have foreseen. The wellsprings are ruined, ruined by humans with their stink and their noise and their trampling. It's no good hiding here in this poor, doomed little valley. Now follow me. Follow you, said Bracken faintly. Toad Flax nodded. To my cottage, only to my cottage. I have things to tell you, things you need to know. Come, she said. Don't be afraid. I want only the best for you. Nettle and Bracken stared numbly. And the others, too, Toad Fox added quickly. Certainly, certainly the others, too. Come, it's not far. Netta looked at Bracken. Bracken pulled her hat down low. All right, she said. As they neared the cliff face, Toad Fox muttered a spell and landed on the ledge. The outlines of her cottage appeared as if through a drifting fog. There was no front porch, no swing, only a rocky path to a stout wooden door. Toad Fox strode forward and waited in the gloom holding her lantern high. Nettle and Bracken stowed their broomsticks in their pocket, then followed Toad Flax inside. Oh, said Bracken, stopping. Rows and rows of spell books, human-made books, and books that Nettle didn't recognize as either sat on shelves carved deep into the rock. Pretty, aren't they? said Toad Flax. Go ahead, take a look. Bracken walked along the shelves, head bent, reading every spine. I see you've noticed the Encyclopedia of Known Enchantments, said Toad Flax, running a thin fing finger along the volumes. It's too bad the others don't have one. She smiled. It would have been especially useful for Rose. She's the one who gave you your lessons, is she not? And so, but so it goes. The Encyclopedia of Known Enchantments, said Bracken slowly. You had one all this time and you didn't tell anybody? Selfish, said Nettle. Don't be impudent said Toad Flax. She hung her lantern on the hook above the table. Sit down, she said, sinking to a seat. 
Her voice was pale, her eyes shadowed by her hat's wide brim. The time has come, and then some. Nettle and Bracken sat on the bench across from her. What they won't tell you about is the fading, said Toad Flax. The fading, quivered Bracken. What's the fading? The fading is when you lose your powers, said Toad Flax. Your magic powers, said Nettle aghast. How could you lose your powers, asked Bracken. Humans drain them away, said Toad Flax. That's impossible. That could never happen. You don't think so, said Toad Flax. It's happened to many, many covens. She paused. It, it began in the days when we lived in the old country, in London. In London, echoed Bracken bleakly. Everyone thought it was a disease from the stink and roar of the city, said Toad Flax. The oldest one succumbed first, and then the next oldest, then the next after that. The youngest one seems to hold out the longest. And they lost their powers? Bracken seemed dazed. Yes, hissed Toad Flax. She leaned toward them. It happens whenever there are too many humans near. That's why we left the old country and came to this one. It's where the wood folk came too. They thought they'd be safe. She smiled wanly. So much for that idea. If you lost your powers, you couldn't fly, cried Nettle. She swallowed. You couldn't talk to animals? You'd have to lug everything around in some big, heavy bundle on your back? Exactly, said Toad Flax. It is too horrible to contemplate. But that is what will happen to you when humans come to this valley. And they will soon. She stared at them with glittering eyes. Bracken put her head in her hands. This is awful. Awful. Ah, but I have something that might help you, said Toad Flax. She got up and went to the cupboard. When she returned, she set something down on the table. It was round, about the size and shape of a loaf of bread. And wrapped in a soft brown cloth embroidered with oak leaves and acorns. A seeking stone? gasped Bracken. You have a seeking stone? Seeking stones were old and potent magic. You could gaze into one and see another witch who had one, even if she was far away. I thought the seeking stones were all gone, said Bracken. Lost. You were wrong, said Toad Flax as she pulled back the cloth. The stone was a smooth blue-green, veined with dark green. It takes two stones working together to see anything, Toad Flax said. Now, listen closely. But Nettle didn't. She reached out, not thinking, and touched the stone, stoon, the stone smooth surface. Instantly, a mist rose and swirled around her. Fool! shrieked Toad Flax, but already her voice seemed to come from someplace far away. Not yet, you little... Then came blackness. 